Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. I'm out for a daytime stroll today along the North Hants or Inkpen Ridgeway. It's not very well documented, but I did find mentions of it in this book, which I've recently got hold of. It is Ancient Trackways of Wessex by H.W. Timperley and Edith Brill first published in 1965. I'm going to just follow a short section today, starting here at the village of Hannington. I got the train to Basingstoke, which a friend of mine always used to call Basinggrad. Uh, then I'm going to walk, I don't know, I'll see how far I can get. I don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, just a daytime walk. Um, hopefully I can find a spot to stop and make some lunch and have some wine with me, as always. So uh, the weather's a bit grim, not looking particularly wonderful today but I'm going to try and make the best of it regardless. In the book they give a practically turn by turn account of where they believe the North Hants or Inkpen Ridgeway goes which I'm almost immediately going to ignore and sort of take my own route a bit. In the book the authors describe it as starting near Broadbury Banks on the slopes of Salisbury Plain and this path then follows over to the Hampshire Downs, as they're known today, passing Inkpen, Inkpen Hill, and then eventually ends at Basingstoke, which is a, seems like a strange terminus for a track. It's possible that here it was then intended to meet the Harrow Way. Perhaps at some point in history there was something of significance at Basingstoke, there certainly isn't today. In places, the authors of the book seem to be very certain about its route, in other places it's conjecture. Any route that has existed over potentially thousands of years would have been used by different people for different reasons at different times, so there isn't really any one definitive route anyway. Joining the Wayfarer's Walk now. Getting a late autumn sort of sense here. gap in that hedge the view has opened up once again now we get a good glimpse of the the ridge that lies before us shame about the sky but nice open plain here plain you know there's a plain well, it's just a big field really isn't it i think this was maize some kind of corn or maize you can see the uh, the husks there slightly studio ghibli-esque cat tunnel type path here regrettably just passed a car park there so I've made all this effort to get out to the middle of nowhere so people just show up in their cars so uh, it isn't quite going to be the refuge from humanity I was hoping for this afternoon you can see other people out walking there's a bit of open access land here which I originally thought might be a good spot to sit and try and make my lunch but I also noticed there are people down the bottom shooting so yeah you're welcome to roam as freely as you'd like in that piece of land but you might get shot Somewhere down there is Watership Down, made famous by the rabbit-themed novel, rabbit-based novel. But uh, not actually that easy to get to. These, there's an open access area section, but it has these gallops in the way. I don't know if that footpath past there would possibly connect with the corner of it. Trig point there looks very picturesque with the sheep around it. Still can't work out how you're actually supposed to get to that open access land at Watership Down. See where I am on the map there, and uh, you'd have to go across this definitely not open access land to get to. I just can't figure that out. So, there is this fork in a path here. If you follow this branch of it, it goes into this little bit of woodland. Seems to me like a fairly well trodden path, well established. Bends round to the right here, and we're going back towards the fence onto that area of open access land. You can see a very clear path well trodden again leads up to this barbed wire fence you'll note only this section is barbed wire over there normal plain wire go a little bit down here to this presumably end of this new section plain wire down there so relatively recently somebody has put in a barbed wire fence there to stop you getting into 
that bit of open access land or getting out of it, that there, according to the OS map, watership down, open access land. Just can't figure out a way to actually get into it without climbing over a barbed wire fence. I may just be getting a bit hangry because it's approaching 2 p.m. and I haven't had my lunch yet. Just haven't been able to find a good spot to sit down and cook where I feel I'm entitled to be. And uh, that's pretty irritating. Nice line of beech trees along here. Pylons in the way, but there's a bit of blue sky there. Okay, I've temporarily got over my grump from back there about the bit of open access land that was inaccessible. The scenery has changed a bit, which is nice. There's beech trees back there were quite uh, aesthetically pleasing. And there's even here and there tiny little glimpses of blue sky. So I, I'm going to press on to Ladle Hill, which is probably where I'll end my walk, although I will need to walk from there to get to a bus stop or a station or something. That's uh, going to be the sort of highlight of the walk hopefully and there is a nice area of open access land there that the path goes straight through so hopefully that can't go wrong. Once again would be nice for you as we're not for the grey weather. And I'm approaching a tumulus, tumulus, never sure how to pronounce that, a barrow. Not sure whether this is long or round, it's a bit of a mess, quite overgrown. Arrived at Ladle Hill Hopefully this is a gate I can actually open, uh, more or less. Seems to have a dew pond next to it. It's tempting to think this may have at one time been a water source for the hill fort. So here we are at Ladle Hill. Iron Age probably, although it didn't seem like a huge amount is known about it, it has never been excavated. There is a bit more structure to it than you would think from just looking at the the squiggles on the OS map. An outer ditch there. A few more lumps and bumps up here. I like the way those po possibly barrows towards the exterior there sort of undulate like waves. Pretty good vantage point to the surrounding landscape. I feel agree wonder if the base of this hawthorn tree might provide a little bit of shelter. I'm sharing this space with some kind of dead animal. Um, <laughs> here comes some terrible camera work. I don't know if you can see the grisly remains of something that has died in there. Uh, can't quite work out what that is, but um, looks sort of mammally. It's yet more fake steak. You must love this, mustn't you? This is a slightly different brand, does it matter? And to go with that, once again, like a video I did a while back, polenta, because it's easy. It's I didn't have any instant mash in and I did have some polenta still, probably from that previous trip. So pretty simple, just boil some water, boil up the polenta stuff, perhaps leave that to sit for a while, fry this in some butter and some Szechuan peppercorns to try and make it a bit fancy bottle of wine of course with me um, ought to be pretty straightforward and I'll just get on with it rather than talking belly can on there if I recall correctly the ratio of this quick cook polenta to water was about one to four so I'll put perhaps fill this up to the 100 milliliter mark in here very approximately ah, that ought to be plenty oh I've got some peas to put in there as well Give peas a chance. There you go, frozen peas, they can go in now, why not? If it will, or it is a bit windy. Forgot to add, the camera's not even centered, is it? Knob of butter goes in there. Give that a bit of a stir around. Knob of butter in the old frying pan. Szechuan peppercorns. Uh, again, the packet says you're supposed to wash these, so I did at home. I don't know what the point of that is, but um, that's why they look sort of slightly expanded. Gas stove is struggling a bit in this breeze. Hopefully that's coming close to a boil and no doubt burning on the bottom as well. Well that's burnt on the bottom. Not going very well today. Oh dear. While I'm burning another component of my meal I'm going to open up this Domain Favely Gevre Chamatan. It's a 2019 Vieille Vine, so it's from Old Vines. Hopefully even if the food is a big disappointment this will at least be okay. From I want to go in 
Nothing seems to be going right today. One of those days. And that pan looks like it wants to fall off the... Um... Right, brief pause on the, uh, the wine chat um, so I can put those fake steaks in. They don't look particularly appetising, these ones. They look like slabs of, I don't know what, but not hugely food-like. There we go, a couple of slabs of something <laughs> that hopefully won't get burnt like the rest of my lunch. See if the wine's any better. 2019, still relatively recent, but as I've said in previous videos, I have had some good wines, particularly some good Gervais Chambertins from 2019 already, so, hmm. Bit of, um, bit of dead rat. Possibly environmental. Morello cherry. Sort of slightly, you know, cherry varying slightly more to the liqueur side. Yeah, I would say that is ready. That's um, nicely fruity, quite condensed, sort of richness to it. I quite like. Actually, very nice. Um, gentle tannins. That at least went right. Look even remotely appealing, maybe. Should we try a little bit? See how terrible this is. Oh. It's all right. A group of ramblers showed up, stood at the, uh, the top of the embankment there, peering down at me, wondering what I was doing. <laughs> That's funny. The polenta, definitely a failure this time. The gas was on too fierce, burnt on the bottom. The whole thing tastes burnt. Really not particularly pleasant, which is sad. Right, well, packing up and moving on. You can't hear me, can you, in this wind? It is a nice spot, Ladle Hill. I don't think I hit it on the best of days or in the best of, uh, best of moves. Uh, but, uh, yes, nice spot. Slight sense the weather is changing now uh, as well. I, the, uh, the, the ramblers, as they were gathered there, are all putting on rain jackets. Not really sure where I'm going at this point. I'm just trying to get back to civilization. So I'm following this footpath that goes alongside the um, open access area of Ladle Hill. Hopefully this will get me back to a road and then I can start to think from there to do next. I think my frustration from earlier has returned a bit, partly because lunch wasn't very successful, but also it's quite an effort sometimes. Getting to a place where I'm far away from other people is really hard work. And then when I eventually found a little ditch on a windswept hill on a grey day in November, 20 minutes in to sitting there, a group of ramblers come past and all peer down the embankment. It's just, it's just, and, and, and now I have a really quite hard time getting home and I'm supposed to be back at a specific time to, uh, to a sort of hand over the baton, childcare, and I'm going to really struggle with that now. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to manage that. So a bit of a frustrating day, really. On the plus side, this is quite a pretty track. Looking very autumnal. I was thinking the other day, why is there no adjective for spring? Have summery, wintry, autumnal, and if you want to describe something as spring-like, what do you say, springy? Doesn't sound right. Could obviously look nice with blue skies. Better lighting. Berkeley Station? Surely that's not station. I've been trudging around fairly hopelessly here in the wilderness. Not like the wilderness, it's got roads. Eventually uh, found a point of reference and then had to sink to the humiliation of phoning around the local taxi companies, which is always an ordeal. But eventually I found one that uh, apparently is going to send out a taxi to rescue me. Okay, well, as you can see from the sign behind me, I've made it to Newbury and I'll probably just about get home in time. Sometimes the, I, I drag myself out the door, get out into the countryside and immediately think, oh, this is so worth it. I'm really glad I made the effort. And on this occasion, I sort of wish I hadn't bothered. Anyway, <laughs> that's not particularly interesting viewing, hearing me complaining about the fact I haven't had a very good day. Uh, Hopefully some of that is salvageable and vaguely watchable. Uh, and if nothing else, it's real. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.